Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win. Find a way to lose. Tank Davis found a way to win. And he did with that big left hand. But a couple of things, right? The Roly Romero, he, he left the ring, you know, I think because he, he was hurt. So they took him out there probably to make sure he's okay. Then at the same time, probably a little embarrassment. But Roly proved that he belonged in the ring with Davis, okay? I don't care what those scorecards said. Ro Roley, that fight was probably, it should have been even or Roley up by a round at that point. You know, it depends on what you're looking for. But Ro Roley was really, um, he gave a very good representation of himself. Roley's career is not over. Tank gave that man respect. And there's a reason why Tank didn't go and say nothing crazy about Roley. It's because Tank knows what he was dealing with. And Roley got reckless. So, before I transition into two th three things I want to talk about, I just want to say Tank is a problem. But Roley gave Tank probably his, his toughest challenge mentally out and in, inside the ring and his toughest challenge physically because Tank Tank felt that power. He felt that awkwardness and he he was being very, very smart and he knew not to just go out there and be ridiculous. And even when he threw that shot, Tank wasn't coming forward. Tank was on the back foot most of that fight up until, you know, towards the end of round six. But that's a result of what Roley brought to the table, and Tank knew that Roley could hurt him, and he even said he's strong. So I, I respect Tank for that. So, okay, so Tank is a problem, but Roley, his career is not over. Roley's going to beat a lot of people. Roley has gotten better. But there's some things that happened there, right? So first thing I want to talk about is the Showtime panel. The only one who wasn't uh, tank bias, a bias to tank was Abner Morris. Was Abner Morris. Abner Morris was being fair. He really was being fair, man. Um, he was giving Roley his credit. He really was. He was pointing out when Roley was having success in the fight. He was pointing out the, the things that Roley was doing good. He was pointing out the things that Roley was doing bad. He was pointing out uh, things Tank was doing good, Tank was doing bad. But he was trying to give Roley credit. But the those other commentators, man, ridiculous. They wouldn't say anything positive about Roley. Everything was just Tank, Tank, Javante Davis, Javante Davis. I'm like, I'm, I'm watching the TV, man, just getting disgusted. Now, don't get me wrong. Tank won the fight. He knocked him out. But up to that point, you, you would swear that Roley was just in there, you know, juggling balls, man. You, you swear Roley was just a clown in the ring juggling balls and making an ass of himself. They didn't, the, the, the outside of Abner Morris, they didn't want to give Roley any credit for anything he was doing. You know, the, the fact that he, he landed some shots on Davis, that Davis was on the back foot. Davis knew not to come forward. He knew that he can get hurt with a shot. The fact that Roley was, you know, how effectively he was utilizing his jab. It was more of a range finder. Uh, closing the distance. You know, trying to make the fight physical. Ro Roley, those, those, I, I personally think Roley was up around when, at the time of the, uh, the, the, the TKO. So, it was frustrating for me to watch it. Like, they just wouldn't give that man any credit. Any credit. If, if you didn't watch the fight, when you watch it. You know, when he gets posted on YouTube and about, probably posted right now, the way these people work. But when you watch it, or next week, you know, if they have it on, I think Haney's fighting next week, they'll probably have it airing before that fight. Just watch it. Well, that's on top rank, so you know, they won't be doing that um, on ESPN. But, but watch it, you'll see. The commentary was just atrocious, man. Horrible, horrible. But anyway, Roley deserves some credit. He, he, he went, he worked. He worked on some things, obviously, but he just grew impatient. I don't know what his corner told him, but 
you know, he left the ring, so we don't know. And when they have the epilogue, then hopefully we can kind of get a, a, an insight to what his corner told him. Because Roley was, Roley was fighting a very, very smart fight. He started to put his foot on the gas a bit. And this is, this is where things went wrong for him, okay? So the first thing I wanted to get out of the way was the panel. The panel was horrible, but they didn't give that man any credit. None at all. The second thing I wanted to address, where Roley went wrong, is the same thing Leo Santa Cruz did. When Leo Santa Cruz, the difference was Leo Santa Cruz had his back on the ropes, and he threw a one-two, right hand, came back, one-two, that right hand. Then Tank timed it. Then he went one-two, he threw it a third time. Tank dipped and threw the, up, the left uppercut and just KO'd Santa Cruz. So he threw the shot one too many times. Santa Cruz could have got away with the right hand if he just threw the, the one-two, one-two, if he just threw, threw it twice. Leo Santa Cruz messed up and threw it that third time and Tank timed him. So that's where Leo Santa Cruz went wrong. And the exact same thing happened in this fight. The difference was Roley was the aggressor. He threw a looping right hand. He didn't really get there. Then came back to try to throw another looping right hand. And Tank countered him with a big left, like, it's like, you call it a 45, like a, a hook. Slash, you know, um, straight left, man. And, and and Tank said he didn't throw the, the shot hard. He just threw it. But Tank, uh, Roley kind of ran into the punch. And Roley was hurt. Roley was hurt bad. His, If you watch his face and everything, if those ropes weren't there, Roley would have fell. He would have fell into whatever was in front of him. Whether it was the ground, whether it was someone in the audience, a spectator, whether it was the ring whether it was uh, somebody out there burning wood in the backyard, whatever, whatever, the, whatever the hell was on the ground in front of Roley, Roley would have fell into it. That's how, that's how bad he was hurt. And then when he managed to get up to his feet, and at first I was like, man, the ref is foul because the ref stopped it. But Roley, Roley he, couldn't, he couldn't stand up. Uh, he would have got hurt really badly. Um, and, and, and in some of the instances you want to say, give him a chance to fight, let him come, let him take a knee again. Like whatever it takes to 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 get yourself uh, to get your faculties back together, but Tank's a great finisher. He would have, I think, he would have really hurt Roly. Roly was hurt, man. So the third, so 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 then, Roly threw one too many. He threw the same shot twice, which was a mistake, and they were wide. Tank saw it and he countered him and got and knocked him out. Same thing that happened with Santa Cruz. The third thing, right? is the way Roley came in and was the same way kind of like it wasn't the same kind of foot movement you know faint feigning to get inside but he came forward and ran into a shot the same way Manny Pacquiao came forward and ran into the shot by Marquez the difference is Manny Pacquiao was out cold cold because Marquez had been practicing that shot um and training because he and Pacquiao had fought three times he knew when Pacquiao was coming forward you know he does that little hesitation, fake, jab, jab, short jab on the front foot, jab, jab, a step, step, and then come come back sometimes with a punch or sometimes without. It's all feints with Manny Pacquiao. Marquez worked on that shot. And when Pacquiao did it, he just knew instinct. He just did it as he threw that shot instinctively. And it was with a whole lot of power. That was probably the most, the hardest shot Marquez had ever thrown in his career. And Pacquiao was out cold, like flatline, cold blue. And um, tonight, if Tank would have turned into that shot, he would have knocked um, Roley Romero out cold the same way Marquez knocked Pacquiao out cold. The difference is Tank just threw the shot. And it was fast and it was accurate, but it, it, he didn't really try to put a bunch of torque on that shot the way Marquez did with Pacquiao. But it was essentially the same thing, coming forward, running to a shot. So what this tells me about Tank Davis, right? I'm not sure who he's going to fight next. He didn't call out anybody. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interviews going on. There's going to be a lot of videos floating around on YouTube. But if someone can pressure Tank, you can have success. Somebody with power and someone who can pressure him, you will have success. The thing is, who is out there 
at 135 who can pressure tank. He already fought Pitbull Cruz. We know Pitbull Cruz can, Pitbull Cruz is a problem. Tank don't want our, he doesn't want that rematch. Leave Pitbull Cruz alone. Outside of Pitbull Cruz, excuse me, who, who's there? You know, Ryan Garcia, Shakira Stevenson, Devin Haney, those guys aren't going to be able to fight that kind of fight. Um, I mean, I just don't see anyone who can, unless you can outbox him for the, the whole 12 rounds and keep your distance because Rolly Romero was doing something really good when he was taking that, the, that two steps back to get out of range. Um, but I think somebody who has more reach than Rolly, they got this guy called Hunter. Hunter, right? He's He's got that uh, highlight, that viral knockout in the casino where he was uh, some gangbanger threatened to shoot him and he started, they started fighting and he knocked him out. Um, that guy is six feet tall with super long reach and he's fighting at 135 now. Somebody with those dimensions who will actually fight long, um, I'm not saying that fighter, I'm just saying somebody with those kind of dimensions, that's the kind of fighter it's going to take to beat Tank. Sit on the outside, box discipline from the outside the whole fight to where Tank starts getting behind and he decides to get anxious and rush and lunge in and, and get desperate. But any anyone else, I mean, it's just, it's just hard to... Tank is, Tank is just good, man. You know, he's good. I thought Roley... And, and Roley did have a chance. Roley, Roley looked good. Roley... It's nothing that Tank did that got him that win. Is what Roley did wrong. Because if Roley would have stayed calm and said, okay, around round eight, seven, eight, I'm going to start to really press him. Maybe it's a little bit different, but Roley wasn't tired. Roley wasn't breathing hard. Roley looked very good. He he just, I wonder if his corner told him to just start pressing. Because Roley started throwing the, the, they must have trained to throw the wide looping right hook. Right hand, maybe thinking they would, they would catch him or something, you know. But it, he just left himself super exposed, man, and and he just ran into something. So y'all can leave your comments below, man. Um, let me know your thoughts. But but I think this right here for Tank Davis, he's already a superstar. I don't know what's gonna happen with him and Mayweather, but Tank Tank definitely needs to to to, to go on and get those big fights. A guy like Lomachenko will be a sitting duck for Haney. Lomachenko can box, he can move, he has angles. But if you if you're there within in Tank's reach, Tank has speed, power, he has boxing IQ. If Linares can get to Lomachenko, and now we're like three, four years removed from that Lomachenko Linares fight, then Tank can definitely definitely get to Lomachenko. Um, so not sure who Tank's gonna fight next, if he's gonna be with Mayweather Promotions, but Tank is a problem, man. He's a problem, and I'm not saying oh, just because he fought Roley. Nah, man, he he showed discipline, man. He didn't he didn't panic. He didn't get carried away. Looked like he may have hurt his shoulder or hand in the fight. Roley jumped on him, but Roley was still respecting his power. Like Tank was respecting his. Tank, Tank's not a fool. Tank is very smart, very disciplined, and he's showing maturity. Tank Tank is on his way. I hope he gets the big fights that he wants. Um, and because this man, is, it's time for him to really start cementing his legacy against the top fighters in his division. I don't know about him getting down to 130, but the 135 division, a lot of guys he can clip, a lot of guys he can make come up to, to 135. And I think Tank is on his way. Roly Romero, it, the road doesn't stop here. Roly Romero proved that he may be the number two at 135. Ro Roly, for Tank, for Tank to say he was strong, and I knew it wasn't time to, to go running in there. What Tank was saying is he knew that Roley could, could hurt him and knock him out. And he didn't want to, to go in there being stupid. And he knew at some point Roley would slow a bit or at least get a little relaxed, a little more relaxed, and then Tank could kind of, you know, increase his output, take a bit more, more risk. And uh, I respect that because it takes a lot of maturity to, to get in a fight with that kind of energy, that kind of atmosphere, potentially having the crowd boo you because you're not, because of the lack of activity and power shots being thrown. And Tank just kind of, you know, sat back, stayed calm. And when openings started presenting themselves, 
He let his shots go. That's why I say, when you got two guys fighting, like Earl Spencer Crawford coming up, well, they can say it may not happen. They just, it's happening. But that's why I say, when you get a guy who just comes forward, and Earl Spence throws a lot of shots, and sometimes he'll loop his shots, you, you got to, you got to give a guy like Crawford a chance to counter because the more you throw, the more you're open for counter for counter shots. And that's what Rowley showed tonight. He started throwing a bit more. They were wide. And as a result, it created opportunities to get countered. And he got countered by the counter puncher. And that it is what it is. So I'm going to hang out tonight, see if I can catch anything on, uh, on Rowley. I'd like to hear from him. I know he's probably really... Uh, emotionally dejected, he's dismayed, he's probably a little bit disoriented, he's hurt, he's probably discouraged, he's probably confused, he's embarrassed. So whole but there's a whole laundry list of adjectives we can use to describe what Roley's probably feeling. But one one adjective I think we should use for Roley is that he should feel proud. Selling the fight, he did an outstanding job. Um, he came in there, he represented himself well, his family well, and he showed that he wasn't gonna be affected by the the lights uh, by the moment, he 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 really was trying to win that fight, and he had Tank on the back foot, and he had Tank respecting him, and everybody I think now had to res had to put a little respect on Romy and Romy's skill set, because to make a guy like Tank go on the back foot, tie you up, and, and to, to to not let his hands go the way he normally does. Now he's not a high volume puncher at all, but he normally his activity rates a little bit higher. You got to give Rowley some credit for that. He was doing a decent job of cutting the ring off. I kind of don't like the way he was hopping forward, but that's his weird style. Uh, but I'm going to go and see if I could uh, catch whatever interviews they're doing with Rowley. He's got to give something. You can't go all week, you know, saying a bunch of craziness, and then now the fight comes and you get knocked out and, you know, decide you, you're not going to give interviews. No, nope. keep the same energy and say, hey, send him the fight. I don't like the guy, but, you know, hey, the better man won. I got caught. Simple. We can respect that. But I don't know what he's going to say, so I'm going to go try to catch some of that. Um, at the same time, it's late. I got to take my boys to uh, some basketball training tomorrow, and we're going fishing. So I'm going to go my butt to bed. For everyone who uh, is sub subscribed to the channel, I want to tell you thank you. I appreciate it, man. It means a lot to me. I've had people asking me about, you know, um, going live, about a cash app. People asking me about uh, there's some something else you could put on there for people can like give you tips or donate or something. I'm not even up on that, but uh, I'm not at a thousand subscribers yet. But once we get there, you know, you know we'll, we'll see what's up, man. But those of you who want to contribute to me, man, I just appreciate the gesture, man. Um, I'm not really about that. Uh, I don't want to violate any any of these uh, YouTube uh, uh, rules, but but at the same time. I just want to tell you thank you. For those of you who've reached out to me, I want to tell you thank you for, for offering that. Um, you know, I recognize that it means a lot to me. But that being said, y'all keep cool, keep safe, like and subscribe. Shout out to all the veterans. I'm in the breeze.